for you. Let this sink in. An opinion piece from a vaccinated Australian writer is what it's called. If COVID was a battlefield, it would still be warm with the bodies of the unvaccinated. Thankfully, the mandates are letting up and both sides of the war stumble back to the new normal. The unvaccinated are the heroes of the last two years, as they allowed us all to have a control group in the great experiment and highlight the shortcoming of the COVID vaccines. The unvaccinated carry many battle scars and injuries, as they are the people we tried to mentally break. Yet no one wants to talk about what we did to them and what they forced the science to unveil. We knew that the waning immunity of the fully vaccinated had the same risk profile as others within society as the minority of the unvaccinated, yet we marked them for special persecution. You see, we said that they had not done the right thing for the greater good by handing their bodies and medical autonomy over to the state. Many of the so-called health experts and political leaders in Australia admitted the goal was to make life almost unlivable for the unvaccinated which was multiplied many times by the collective mob, with the fight taken into workplaces, friendships, and family gatherings. Today, the hard truth is none of it was justified as we took a quick slide from righteousness to absolute cruelty. We might lay the blame on our leaders and health experts for the push, but each individual within society must be held accountable for stepping into the well-laid-out trap. We did this despite knowing full well that principled opposition is priceless when it comes to what goes inside our bodies and we let ourselves be tricked into believing that going into another ineffective lockdown would be the fault of the unvaccinated and not the fault of the toxic policy of ineffective vaccines. We took pleasure in scapegoating the unvaccinated because after months of engineered lockdowns by political leaders blinded by power, having someone to blame in turn to burn at the stake felt good. We believed we had logic, love, and truth on our side, so it was easy to wish death upon the unvaccinated. Those of us who ridiculed and mocked the non-compliant did it because we were embarrassed by their courage and principles and didn't think the unvaccinated would make it through unbroken, and we turned the holdouts into punching bags. Lambie, Carr, Chan, Andrews, McGowan, Gunner, and the other cast of hundreds in prominent roles, and we here in America, we could add Fauci and the rest of them and Biden in prominent roles need to be held to account for vilifying the unvaccinated in public and fueling angry social media mobs. The mobs, the mask Nazis, and the vaccine disciples have been embarrassed by betting against the unvaccinated because mandates only had the power we gave them. It was not compliance that ended domination by big pharma companies, Bill Gates and his many organizations, and the World Economic Forum. It was thanks to the people we tried to embarrass, ridicule, mock, and tear down. We should all try and find some inner gratitude for the unvaccinated as we took the bait by hating them because their perseverance and courage bought us the time to see we were wrong. So if mandates ever return for COVID or any other disease or virus, hopefully more of us will be awake and see the rising authoritarianism that has no concern for our well-being and is more about power and control. The war of the unvaccinated was lost, on the unvaccinated was lost, and we should all be very thankful for that.